Hi friends, I'm Kim Adamski, HIV prevention specialist at the Hartford Gay and Lesbian Health Collective. Um, I'm here live today with the Hartford Gay Men's Chorus. Um, before I pass that on to them, um, my organization, Hartford Gay and Lesbian Health Collective, is located at 1841 Broad Street in the south end of Hartford. We provide sexual health services, STD testing, dental support groups, as well as education. You can call us at 860-278-4163. So now, uh, if you all from the uh, Gay Men's Choir can introduce yourselves individually and also the uh, chorus, please do. Good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Reeder and I'm the co-founder and executive director for the Harper Gay Men's Chorus. Um, thank you so much for having us this evening, Kim. It's a great way to start off our 10th anniversary season and uh, we'll chat a little bit about that uh, in our conversation. Hello everyone, my name is Christopher Clark and I am the Interim Artistic Director of the Hartford Gay Men's Chorus. All right, great. And what does the Interim Artistic Director do? That's uh, the Executive Director's a little clearer. <laughs> yeah, it's a long title. Uh, I'm Interim because uh, we're in transition right now from our past Artistic Director because of COVID and uh, I'm sort of the in-between acting as the Artistic Director uh, so interim artistic director, planning the music, the all the artistic things that go into a show. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be a lot more that goes into it than just singing. Um, oh, yeah. Although that's important too. So <laughs> can you give us a little brief history of the Hartman, Hartford, excuse me, Hartford Gay Men's Chorus? Sure, I'll, I'll take that one, Chris. So... Um, well, as I alluded to, we are getting ready to launch and celebrate our 10th anniversary season this coming uh, September. And um, it's interesting the journey that the chorus has taken, but the idea and the thought behind this chorus started out as a conversation at a kitchen table uh, with also co-founder uh, J.D. Bauer. And what has grown out of this uh, idea has brought us to a 10 year anniversary already. And it's been an amazing journey with any arts organization or any organization, non for profit. We've had our ups and downs, uh, we've had our struggles along the way, but we've continued to the process of moving forward and growing over the years and learning. And, and from that, really establishing ourselves as an arts institution here in the greater Hartford community. Uh, and beyond. So we're really excited to come out of the pandemic uh, and navigate and move towards in-person rehearsals um, this coming September. And I, I won't take all of the that away. I want Chris to talk about that process of what it was like to navigate through a pandemic and uh, what we accomplished during the year and a half that we were unable to actually be in the same room together. So... Yeah, so let's hear from Chris a little bit about how you dealt with COVID, what you did, got around it, et cetera. Sure. Um, I joined the course about four years ago, as, uh, and I, I love um, singing in chorus. I'm a music teacher, and I love the, the tenor bass repertoire, singing uh, with a bunch of guys. And so it, it was a couple of great years. Then when COVID hit and we lost our artistic director, we weren't sure what was going to happen. So... Uh, being a music teacher in the high school, I, I'm teaching chorus throughout the day, and I know how we're handling it and how we're dealing it with it, and so I thought I could offer something to the chorus to keep it going, to do, to do it uh, live streaming via Zoom, and uh, it's, it's a little challenging because as a music teacher, we use our ears, we listen, uh, and we comment and go from there a lot with dynamic and balance. But online, uh, I found myself as a music teacher using my eyes a lot and be, trying to be observant of where, where the problem spots might be and how to navigate the whole different rehearsal process uh, when we're not all together, we're not singing together, uh, but yet being there for the chorus members. And so it was challenging, and uh, especially with dynamics and balance. Uh, but even though it was tough, we all have that love of 
being together, love of being in a choral group, um, and that saw us through. We were able to put together two great shows, a radio show and uh, another virtual show last year. So very proud of that and the guys. That's really great. Yeah, I can totally feel you on the uh, uh, innovating with Zoom. Let's just put it that way. I mean, we had to move a lot of our programming online too. And it's tricky to like kind of figure out how to get people, what people are interested in on Zoom as opposed to what they were interested in real life. Uh, dealing with the logistics, but it sounds like you were able to be creative with, uh, with the resources you had. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to add, like, Chris did an amazing job navigating the uh, chorus along with our leadership team through the pandemic. And one of the other things that I kind of want to add to that is, while we all love to sing and perform music together, that's why we, we are in the chorus, the chorus has become, for many of our members, a family. And it's what they look forward to every week, every Monday night, 7 to 9.30, being all together in the same room. And with that is the social outlet of it. And we really felt that it was really important that not only we continue to navigate through the pandemic through virtual rehearsals and sing and let our voices be heard, but it was also a great opportunity to have some really fun social events, which uh, Chris's husband, David, was a big part of and our chorus council president, Scott McEver, uh, putting together some weekly social events, whether it was a, uh, what I, you know, many different things. Um, but that really kept us together as a whole throughout the pandemic as well, plus being able to work together to create music and produce the two shows that Chris spoke of. Um, and I also just wanna say, you know, for some members, it wasn't their cup of tea. And we, we lost some members during the pandemic who took the time off because they just couldn't handle the use of technology. And, and like Chris made reference to, not hearing someone beside you and you know the sound of a, your, your section and having to record by yourself is a whole different ball game. Um, but I'm happy to say, and I know Chris is proud of this too, we averaged about 30 plus performers each concert cycle, which basically, is in numbers, it's about 75% of our membership. So we did, I feel like we accomplished a really good goal of trying to maintain and keep people involved, whether it was through the social aspect of our virtual calls, or if it was working on the music toward our, our productions, so. It sounds like you have a really dedicated uh, group of singers, which is really great to see. Very cool. Yeah, some of the things Robert was talking about, our president, Scott, and um, my husband, David, they, uh, Scott especially put together some scavenger hunts. Uh, we, had a, uh, we had a movie night on, in our backyard, wherever it was distance, and we had movie you know, on a big screen. So the social things definitely um, were, were really, really important for the group. Oh, yeah, that's really important, too. I mean, a lot of people psych psychologically suffered because of the uh, social aspect of the pandemic. So it's great that you were able to figure that out and keep your community going because I think that is an important community to have. So um, so what are you guys up to upcoming? <laughs> well, um, I'm happy to say that first of all, we, we came together with outside, but in-person rehearsals outside uh, and we performed two national anthems at Pride Nights, which were for the Hartford Yard Goats and the Hartford Athletic, which was our first time performing uh, at their venue and for, their, for them and their fans. So that was really exciting. And at both, both, both uh, locations when we performed, the crowd was more than welcoming and so excited, I think, just to see a live performance by a group and you know to be outside and hear the national anthem so both of those performances were really meaningful to us for coming together for the first time and uh, i I'll, i won't toot chris's horn but i'll let him speak on it was chris's first time actually being in front of chorus members conducting 
us through the national anthem. So Chris, maybe you want to just talk about going from the virtual world into an in-person in front live in front of all of us. Yeah, what was that like? Oh, uh, it was so rewarding because you know, to work with all these guys on a screen, the little heads, and then to actually finally be together and to go over a song, the national anthem, they knew the arrangement, but then instantly, like riding a bike, they were so attuned to me. I was watching them, they're watching me conduct. I'd ask for a little crescendo and they were just all so happy to give it the smiles back and forth between conductor and member. It, it, was, it was magical and they felt it, it was, no, words can't say. Um, and it, it was a wonderful, wonderful two, two performances. And you could hear the audience feeling it, the communication between us and them. And it, it was so exciting. That's so nice. Wow. That sounds like a really, really meaningful moment. Um, so I believe you all have auditions coming up. Is that right? We do. Yeah. Do you yeah. Do you want to speak on that, Chris, and I'll chime in where you need me? Sure. Um, <laughs> August 22nd, uh, between 1 and 4, um, we, ha we have it on, I think, on the website, all the information, of who to call, and, and it's a very painless, uh, just a song of choice. Uh, we have a pianist available if you'd like to bring music, or you could sing a cappella. Uh, we'll check your range and some sight reading, and a lot of it's for placement, um, tenor, tenor one, bass, baritone, um, and gives us a chance to hear you and, and work with you, and that's what's coming up. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'll link to the, um, to the uh, website page about it in the description when I upload the video. Uh, were you about to say something, Rob? Yeah, I just wanted to add, and I just want to <clears throat> mention that we are open to anyone 18 or over, older, and we welcome all gender identities and expressions. And the only, and you've heard Chris refer to this a couple of times, the only requirement besides the audition part is that they be able to sing in the TTBB range, which stands for tenor one, tenor two, baritone and bass. Um, but usually that's not, a, it's never an issue really. So please, whatever your gender expression is, come and audition for the course. We would love to have you. Um, and those, the date and the time uh, Chris just gave, but our rehearsal home is the Unitarian Society of Hartford, which is at 50 Bloomfield Avenue in Hartford. And so that's, that's like that intersection near Albany at, right? Correct. The it's one that kind of looks like it's got like cardboard sails on it? Yes. <laughs> And, and I just want to met, I give a shout out to the Unitarian Society of Hartford. They have been with us from the very start of our course. So in reality, they're celebrating 10 years along with us of being our home. They're our rehearsal home. They were our venue for three concerts at, before we moved to the Edna Theater at the Wadsworth. Uh, so they have a long history with the Hartford Gay Men's Chorus, and mm -hmm. we have a wonderful partnership collaboration with them. So shout out to Unitarian Society Yay. of Hartford. I'm really uh, glad you mentioned the um, the uh, gender expansive folks being welcome to uh, Gay Men's Chorus, because that actually was not something that I knew about. And excellent. that's really important to get out there. And our first rehearsal, we're excited. We're having a bring a bring a friend. Ooh. And so if some of your listeners, they uh, are nervous about auditioning, but they maybe know somebody in the course, they can join them for that first rehearsal, kind of sit in, sing, see what it's all about, and then afterwards maybe decide to continue with us. That's really great, too. That's a good idea. Um, and so you said you're going to keep an eye on the COVID situation, but should things go okay, what are your... Um, plans for upcoming performances. Do you have any? Yeah, we do. Um, so as I mentioned offline before we started the conversation tonight, obviously our leadership team, which consists of five of us, uh, along working along with the board, will continue to monitor the uh, COVID-19 um, pandemic, because we still are in a pandemic. Yeah. Um, but it is our goal to move into in-person rehearsals beginning 
at the uh, end of August, August 30th would be our first rehearsal. And really, like I mentioned to you, Kim, you, we're gonna be having to follow all of the safety protocols and advice of the CDC mm -hmm. in terms of regulations of how we handle things, not only internally from our organization, but externally too. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, we're at the Unitarian Society. They could come back to us with certain rules and regulations that they and procedures they want us to follow along with what we already have to do to make sure and ensure that every member is safe as we move into, into the rehearsal process. It is our hopes and goal that we'll be able to return to an in-person performance at the Edna Theater. Um, it's slated for the weekend of December 10th through the 12th. And, um, you know, really what we're gonna be doing is taking it day by day, week by week, and following the CDC guidelines and regulations and listening to our state and our governor in terms of what has been addressed and what guidelines we need to follow, so. Yeah, that's all we really can do. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's what I'll be doing my my workplace, you know, as teaching music. It'll be the same thing in the courses that I teach in school, distancing and masks. And so we're hoping to make it work and we're planning a holiday show, which I'm very excited about. We even have a title, Holiday Hijinks. <laughs> Cute. It's, a, it's a lot of fun and some great music. Beautiful. All right. Is there anything else you all want to bring up before we uh, close it up? Well, I just want to mention you've referenced our website a couple times, but yes. our website is www.hgmc.org. And we have a really nice social presence on Facebook, which is under the Harper Gay Men's Chorus. And then we're both uh, we're on both Twitter and Instagram as HGMC Sing. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can follow us on those three platforms and uh, stay up to date on. I mean, our we whatever is up and coming, whether it's auditions or it's a special event or our concerts, everything's always marketed and. Uh, put on our social media platforms to share Beautiful. with all of them. And I'll share those in the description too. Um, how can folks get in touch with you if they'd like to? Well, for right now, um, if anybody has any questions for myself or Chris, yeah. you can reach me at rreader at hgmc.org. And Chris would be C Clark at hgmc.org. Please feel free to uh, email with any questions or concerns. Uh, we're happy to answer those. And if you're interested in auditions, you can send that to us as well. Excellent. Great. Um, and before we close, just to reiterate, I'm uh, Kim from the Hartford Gay and Lesbian Health Collective. Uh, and we were very happy to have the Hartford Gay Men's Chorus live with us. We are big fans, of course. Um, if you need to contact me uh, about uh, like our services, sexual health, anything like that, it's Kim A at hglhc.org or 860-278-4163 extension 111. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rob and Chris, for coming on live with us today. Our thank pleasure. You, it's All our right. pleasure. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Have a great night. You too.